Hello, my name is Eric Lawrence, and this is an introduction to the Fiddler HTTP debugger. Fiddler can be installed from www.fiddler2.com or www.fiddlertool.com. The difference between the two is version 2 is written for the .NET Framework 2.0, and it enables tampering and viewing of HTTPS traffic. Installation is simple. Simply click the link, choose to run the installer, note the digital signature, Accept the license terms, pick an installation folder, and then you're done. Inside of Internet Explorer, you'll find a Fiddler icon in the, in, the in the toolbar. If it's not visible, you can choose to add it using the Customize Command Bar command. When you click on the Fiddler icon, it will start Fiddler. Fiddler boots up and does a version check against the service to see if there's a new version available. This is the main Fiddler UI. On the left hand side you'll see the HTTP sessions list. The sessions list shows all of the HTTP sessions which are running through Fiddler. In general, Fiddler can capture any program that enables an HTTP proxy, but by default it hooks up for WinINet, which is the HTTP stack used by Internet Explorer and many Microsoft applications, including Office. The session list, when you double click on a session, will show the session inspector. The session inspector shows HTTP traffic. In the top, you can see the request, and in the bottom, you can see the response. There are multiple tabbed views which show different formats of the data. So in this case, we're going to show the headers of the request. If you'd like to see the raw headers in plain text form, you can either click raw here, or you can click raw here. This will actually show you the raw bytes that were sent out over the wire. You can choose actually to see the bytes if you're interested in those as well. On the response, there's multiple views of interest. So you can see the headers. You can see a text view of the body of the HTTP response. If it's an image, you can choose to click on the image view and see it as an image. In this case, this is an image, so that wouldn't be very useful. There's a hex view. There's an auth view, which will show any authentication headers. There's caching, which pulls out information about the caching headers on the response. There's privacy, which will analyze the P3P statement, if there is one present. Raw will show the plain text of the response. And XML will show an XML formatted tree, if the response is formatted as XML. The special inspector is called the transformer inspector. The transformer inspector allows you to remove HTTP chunked encoding or HTTP compression, or add it if you'd like, so that you can see how this impacts your response. If you're viewing plain text, for instance, and the response was compressed, you probably want to use the transformer inspector to decompress the response. There are some other tabs up at the top of Fiddler, so let's click on the Performance Statistics tab. In this, you can see the number of requests, and you can see some information about them. Let's clear the session list by clicking Control X and actually refresh the Fiddler 2 homepage and see the traffic appear in Fiddler. Actually, let's do a full refresh with Control F5. Okay, so now you can see the traffic that makes up the Fiddler 2 homepage session. If you select it all, you can see that there are five requests. There's a certain number of bytes sent and received. It's broken down by content type. You can choose to see the chart of the traffic and so forth. So the Performance Statistics tab is an excellent place to start if you're trying to pr profile the performance of your web application. We've already covered the Session Inspector, which shows information about the HTTP session that's currently selected. The Autoresponder tab is an advanced feature which enables you to have Fiddler respond on, the part on behalf of the web server. This is a very interesting feature if you're trying to determine uh, security or uh, another type of response manipulation where you're trying to determine whether or not the client can correctly handle a server response. In this case, we're going to move on because that's a very advanced feature. Next is the Request Builder. The Request Builder is a feature that allows you to create a raw HTTP request rather than using the browser. The interesting feature about the Request Builder is you can drag and drop an existing request and then re-execute it very easily. Last is the Rules tab. This is a plugin which plugs into Fiddler that shows your rules. Fiddler is extensible in multiple ways. You can use the Auto Fiddle interface, which allows you to write .NET code, which extends Fiddler and the request pipeline, 
and in this case rules is a auto fiddler tab which shows the rules file. Rules are the primary way which, in which you extend Fiddler. Rules are JavaScript, is a JavaScript file which contains commands that extend Fiddler's UI or modify the request in response. So in this case you can see there's an on before request handler. The script commands in this run before every HTTP request is sent. They can change the request, they can change the headers, they can even return a response automatically to the request. The on before response handler does the corresponding change to the response. The rules functions, as you can see, you can click customize rules. If you've installed it, the Fiddler script editor provides a syntax highlighted version of the rules tab, but sometimes it's convenient to just have the rules available in the rules tab. As you can see, the rules menu is extensible. So for instance, the user agent submenu of the rules menu is actually filled out from your JavaScript file. The last thing I'd like to mention is the quick exec box. The quick exec box allows you to execute a command quickly. So rather than using the, the rules or another menu, you can explicitly specify a command here. In this case, we're going to use some of Fiddler's breakpoint features. So BPU means breakpoint on URL. And we're going to breakpoint on, let's choose a CSS file. So anytime there's a CSS request from the browser, Fiddler will break on it. So when we refresh, we see over in Fiddler that there's actually a paused request here. You can choose then to either break on response, run that request to completion, or you can actually choose a response to automatically return. In this case, let's choose break on response and see what happens. When we break on response, the server sends back a response and Fiddler breaks on it, enabling you to change it or modify it if you'd like. In this case, we could change the font for the body to say uh, small and let's see what other styles we could do that would be interesting. Well in fact let's let's actually see what happens if you remove all of the style rules and choose run to completion. As you can see the view of the web page is now significantly altered because the, the CSS file was not delivered, it was delivered blank. So that's a quick way that you can change a request or a response using the quick exec and Fiddler breakpoint rules. It's worth mentioning the Fiddler help menu. Fiddler help menu enables you to check for new versions, send feedback to me, and I'm always looking for feedback for new features or new help, and view help about Fiddler itself. There's a continuing continually expanding set of help topics, discussions, and videos on how to best use Fiddler to, to accomplish your goals. Thanks for taking a look.